Hey YouTube family, we're back in a different kind of scenery. I'm sitting on the floor today because it's just that type of video. I'm feeling very relaxed, very zen, but also very nervous at the same time. Also a little excited. I'm sure you guys read the title and you're probably like, oh, for real? <laughs> so yeah, I want to talk about me quitting my job, leaving my job why I left, um, how I prepared to leave my job, and yeah, we'll just get into like what's next for this channel. If you're new here, I do create hair, fashion, and lifestyle content to encourage you to be your very best self. I have, what, like, I think like over 330 videos on this channel now, so check them out after this video if you're interested. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of we have a good time over here. So I hope you stick around. Okay, so first of all, what was I doing like this whole time, right? I was a teacher and I started teaching when I was 22. I had just graduated from Howard University and I was working at a restaurant for a while, like a good year, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. My major was in radio TV film and French, and I interned at various places like production houses. I even interned at Atlantic Records at one point and I was just like, what am I gonna do next? <laughs> even though I had a really good time doing those internships, I lost interest by the time it was time for me to graduate. So I, after I got tired of working at the restaurant I was at, started applying and eventually landed on the job that I ended up having for nine years. Y'all, I was a teacher. In early childhood so we're talking ages three to five so pre-k age i was a teacher for nine years i still can't believe that <laughs> and you know i loved it i enjoyed teaching i enjoyed seeing the kids learn and really become like really grow into themselves over that time period of course there were a lot of interesting experiences but overall i had a really positive experience as a teacher and it weighed out the negatives you know what i mean i know being a teacher is seen as a very tough job and it can be tough it's definitely not for everyone it requires a lot of patience which i already naturally have so i think that's also why it fit but i also realized while doing that job like oh wow i actually do know how to convey information to people in a way they can understand and i do believe that if you're able to break things down into their simplest form which i have to do with which i had to do with pre-k age students all the time that's how you really know something so i had a lot of practice in that and i would say it was good until it wasn't i started let me see i think i was around 27 when i was trying to figure out like wh what's next for me here am i going to keep teaching for a while longer if, am i going to become an instructional coach am i going to become a principal and it was one year where i was just like oh my god this is for the birds we had a new principal come in and it was like <laughs> i was a mentor teacher at the time me and the other mentor teacher it was two of us we were like basically assistant principals and i was like oh hell no i'm good off this i don't want to go down this pathway but i was like what do i want to do i didn't know i was just kind of like living my life you know i would do anything that normal 20 somethings would do you go to work you go out with your friends you spend time with yourself you might have a partner i had a few partners in my 20s <laughs> But as most of y'all know now, I am with C and we've been together for five years as of this year. I'm so excited. So yeah, I met C when I was 26. Yeah, when I was 26. So things started changing, right? When did things start changing? I would say 27 when I kind of got the itch to do something more and feel like I wanted to be outside the classroom. Then... Uh, basically my school was going through drastic changes and they had to lay off a bunch of people and they technically laid me off and I was just like what what do you mean you don't have room for me like that's what I was being told that was the messaging and I'm like at this point let me see I was 28 or so I'm like okay I've been doing this since I was 22 I'm like a veteran at this point six years in and you're telling me you don't have room for me 
but you're telling me this teacher that just started at my campus this year got a contract for next year for real it was some backward shit and i was pissed and hurt all at the same time especially because there was <laughs> they had this new teacher from another campus come to my classroom in particular because they were like hey we need this new teacher to come sit and watch you to help her learn like how to do things our way at the school i said sure no problem me and that teacher ended up becoming cool and we exchanged numbers and we would text here and there so at the end of that year when i found out that they were not they didn't have room for me and that they were basically trying to put me in this placeholder position she texted me and she was like oh my god guess what i'm being placed at your campus for next year and i was just like Is this a bad dream? I said, oh, really? That's awesome. You know, I kept it cute, but I was just like, so you telling me that y'all didn't have a place for me, but y'all just have this new teacher who was in my classroom learning how I teach, and now she's coming to my campus and essentially like taking my place? Like, what is going on? <laughs> None of this shit made sense, y'all. It didn't make sense. But here's what ended up happening. Um, that summer was 2019, right? Was that 2019? No, that was summer of 2018, right? Cause I was 28 and they basically was like, you know what? No, I'm lying y'all. That was 2019. Cause that was summer C and I went to Thailand. Yeah, child, I was barely applying for a job. I was just winging it. I don't even know what I was thinking at the time, but I was really hurt. And when we got back from Thailand, I was like, okay, let me try to buckle down and start applying. This was like in July. Mind you, school years in my area start in like August. <laughs> so there's that. And then my, my school called me back and said, hey, we have a position open in this area at a different campus, not the one that you've been at for the past, you know, five, six years, a new one. And I was looking like, and it was all the way on the other side of town. Mind you, before then I was used to walking to work, which was a luxury at the time. So I was like, fine, I'll deal with it. I'll take it. So I accepted it because I had nothing else. Also, I was planning my 30th birthday party, which I normally do a birthday party every year. And it's always like a big to do, meaning a lot of expenses. And I was like, I need a job. So I accepted the position, was absolutely hating it. Like the commute was terrible. I hated commuting to work. Waking up early was becoming harder and harder for me. I was always late, but I left out that year because I had an amazing team. Shout outs to my team. Y'all know who y'all are. I'ma just say Miss H and Miss J. I love y'all. <laughs> um, and they were very understanding. Now at this time, I already started my YouTube channel in 2019 at the top of the year, January. So, you know, I was doing my YouTube thing. I was like editing everywhere all the time like non-stop editing non-stop filming i definitely am the type who you know can prioritize work over a lot of things so it was really easy for me to develop some bad habits in regards to balancing having my youtube channel and work and family and my relationship like it was just like everything was just blending together <laughs> into one big pile of mush so um I realized as I was going through my journey with YouTube, I was really interested. I was really into it. I enjoyed the process of, well, honestly, I don't really enjoy filming that much because it can be so cumbersome. I've grown to like more of the sit down talking videos when I'm talking about something. But when it comes to having to always like put on a wig um, and do a tutorial, it can be a little bit tedious. I enjoy it, but during the filming process, it just, if you, if you are a content creator, I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from, but it can just be a lot. <laughs> it can take a long time to film. Editing also takes a long time, but I enjoy that creative aspect more. I, I guess I'll just say that. So I was really getting into my YouTube groove and it was going great. Like I gained my first thousand subscribers within like three months. I gained my first 10,000 subscribers within like a year and two months something like that 14 months like it was going it was going real strong and about two years into my youtube journey i realized yo i think i want to i want to do this like for real for real but i felt like 
even though I was doing ample amounts of research, like every single day, week by week by week, I still felt like I was a baby in the game. And I felt like, you know, who am I to think that I could do this full time? Like these are some of the thoughts that I had. Like I wasn't, like I wasn't good enough to do it. it. It was weird. But I received a lot of encouragement from the YouTube family, y'all that are watching me right now, from my fellow peers within this community, especially the wig community. I feel like we're we're pretty close knit. I feel like the people who do um, hair content regularly, wig content, we all know each other and we all are pretty supportive of each other. So that's been super helpful throughout my YouTube journey. Yeah, so I was okay. The reason why I even know you could really do it full time is because um, I spoke to someone within my first year at YouTube and she like really laid out everything for me as far as like this is how I make money, this is how much I make. I really have to hand it to her because I would not have known. I was only like month three into YouTube and she relayed all this information to me and it was very kind of her. So look, I will always sing Sherelle's praises because she did not have to do that. At the time, I, was, I still wasn't thinking about like doing anything full time. I was just enjoying the creative process. But once I was at that two year mark and I already was armed with information, I already started doing a lot of research. I was like, you know what? I think we can make something shake. I may not feel confident about it right now, but you know, I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing, but keep amping things up. Then COVID hit. And COVID definitely changed things. One, I had way more time to focus on my content. I didn't have to like rush home at five o'clock and worry about the sun going down because I always film in front of a big window. I just really like daylight filming. So I was like, yo, I can like film at 9 a.m. and then teach a class at 10 a.m. and then go back and edit at 1 p.m. Like this is great. I was loving the fact that I was working from home. It was awesome. And then my new teaching team, they were great. Like we had a wonderful virtual class. No regrets there whatsoever. The way we set up our schedule, we had freedom, thanks to my principal who is awesome. Shout outs to my girl. I'm gonna say P, you know who you are. <laughs> and um, she really set the stage as a principal and really allowed us to do our thing because a lot of us were veteran teachers at campus. So at that point, I was like, okay, I, I was definitely getting my YouTube bag. And then the headband wig trend came around and listen, everything like, everything just went haywire because I started having, you know, videos like gain like tens of thousands of views. And for me, that only really happened one time off the break. I had this one video showing how I make a wig look natural. That was like my first viral video ever in 2019. But, but the whole headband wig era, it was like video after video after video I was putting out was doing much better than my normal views. So, and the engagement was high. So I started working with more human hair companies and then I realized like there were two months where I was matching my teaching salary. Mind you, I was definitely undercharging myself, but I was working a lot more, I guess, to make up for it. <laughs> and I was like, hold on a second. If I'm making the same amount doing this as teaching, that means I can actually do this. And let me know if you are a business owner, content creator, entrepreneur, when was that moment for you? Like when you felt like, hold on a second, I'm like, this is a source of income for me and I can actually make this happen, what? It really causes you to really pause and think like, wow. Cause at that point I never thought about being an entrepreneur. The idea of people owning their own business was terrifying to me. I just thought it wasn't something that was possible for me. I don't know what I thought I was gonna do before then, but having my own Business was not really a part of that thought until I started getting deep into my YouTube journey. Whew. All right, I'm just trying to make sure I'm on track because I, I wrote like a little outline for me. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about 
so I already mentioned that I knew that I wanted to like be, do YouTube full time. How did I prepare to leave? That's what the, that, that's the outline says. How did I prepare to leave my job? So once I made that decision, like this is what I wanted to do, I had to assess my finances and I realized the savings was null and void. Um, what savings? Like it just was non-existent at that point. And I just started saving very aggressively. Like hundreds of dollars a month literally like one month i almost put away a thousand dollars like i was just like going in because once i have a goal in mind like once i put my mind to something i'm like this is what i'm gonna do oh it's on and popping like it's done consider it done i'm very maybe type a when it comes to that type of thing so i started saving more aggressively and not just individually, me and C started saving collectively as well because we're saving to move. So I was like, wow, I'm able to save in two different accounts at the same damn time? Let me tell you, COVID was a lot of different things. And if you lost someone due to COVID or suffered from COVID, I'm so sorry you went through that. I, it's a travesty. However, I feel very lucky that I was able to work from home during that time and I finally sat my ass down, stopped going places, stopped going out, and was able to save a lot of money, more than I've ever saved in my life. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I was able to become so disciplined during that time, but it was a good year of that. So that was one of the main things I did to prepare to leave my job, the, the financial part, because for me, I need financial security. Like that is of utmost importance to me along with other things but you know how you have different things that you need like in order to feel stable in life the financial security piece is is high up there for me so i had that taken care of also at that time i was doing an exorbitant amount of research i was obsessed with watching videos on youtube analytics how to increase my engagement um how to continue to grow your channel how people make money, especially the making money portion. My girl, Sheba, who's on YouTube, XOXO Sheba, hey boo. She put us on, cause we have like a little group chat. She put all of us on to Maddie James. And Maddie James is definitely someone that I paid attention to and I used to watch her lives weekly. And I usually felt so inspired by her lives and the people, the community that she fostered through those lives. And I was like, wow, like I'm not alone in this. Like there are other people who are creators like me and a lot of them like work two, three jobs. Some people want to go full time. Some people are content where they are, whatever. But it was just nice to like really find those spaces, find those places that you can call home within your craft. And I feel like I found that a lot in 2020 during COVID. So I prepared by saving money and I prepared by doing my research. And that's something that I recommend to everyone when you are about to start on a new venture the research portion is critical because otherwise it's like you're stepping into your car to go somewhere but there's no roadmap there's no gps like what are you doing where are you going where are you headed the research portion is a part of knowing your direction and where you want to end up and i can't say i knew exactly where i wanted to end up outside of you know leaving my job but i had direction for sure and i think you know i think it showed through in my content um, my YouTube community, all of us here, I feel like we became a lot more tight knit. I love to respond to comments. Y'all know that. So we chit chat in the comments and I feel like I'm pretty good at giving y'all what y'all want to see. And it just so happens to align with, I want to give y'all anyway. So it's like, you know, we here, <laughs> I feel like we are on the same page here on is that you're here. So that is how I prepared in the description box. I will list all the YouTube channels that I watched in this process because there's quite a few i can think of at least five off the top of my head it's probably like a good 10 channels that i watched consistently when i was planning like how to elevate my content you know equipment making money on social media I, look check the description box you'll see all the channels listed there they're all highly recommended by me and they're all people that just know what they're doing so at the end of the day why did i leave my job at the end of the day i left my job because you know it, it was time it was time to go covid was 
very difficult once we got back in the classroom so there was that and i'm not going to speak too much on that here i'm actually thinking about doing a separate video where i actually talk in detail about why i quit teaching if that's something that you're interested in maybe you just want to know or you're a fellow educator drop comments down below and let me know and i will get that video out to you as soon as i can but teaching during covid was hard i'll keep it at that and i got a sign let me tell y'all about what happened, right? So it's now 2021, it's August, September. And my old principal from like when I first started teaching reached out to me and we kept in touch like here and there like once a year. There was a job opportunity where he was in charge of the whole shit basically. <laughs> so he could pick and choose who he wanted. So he contacted me we had a discussion um and i was able to look at the job opportunity look at the job description and when i read it i was just like yo are you freaking kidding me this is what i wanted when i was 26. this is what i wanted when i was 27. when i was lost and confused when i didn't know if i wanted to go to grad school or not this is what i wanted i wanted an opportunity to step up and lead in a different way just not necessarily in the classroom because the position was basically to be like a regional manager within an educational group i won't say which but it was a director position it was a senior position and i used to like that the, to me though that position when i was 26 27 was like goals for me you know like this is what i want to work towards but as I was sitting there, I read it over like five times. And it's 2021, at this point I'm 31 years old, right? And I'm like, yo, the feeling, I'm just waiting for the feeling and the feeling is just not there. Like it was just, it was just blank. And I was just like, huh. And I showed the job description to C and C just said, how do you feel, you know? And I was just like, I don't, I don't want this. Like this sounds great, but this is just not where I'm at anymore. And that's the moment I realized that I, you know, me and teaching was about to go through a breakup. But that is also the moment where I realized even more so that I had fallen in love with something new, which is YouTube and creating. Mind you, I am not new to creating things. I am, I was born a creative. Actually, when I was younger, I was singing, dancing, acting. I used to draw. All that has been in me for a very long time. And as I said before, when I went to school, I was in radio, TV, and film. But I just feel like it laid dormant for a long time and then YouTube just kind of like sparked those creative juices back up. And then the community that's come with it has been second to none. So in that moment, I was like, you know what? My job here is done. It's time to move on. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? This is my last year teaching. This is my last year. I don't know what it's going to look like exactly when I leave, but this is it. And my plan was to, my plan was to quit, you know, that summer because I wanted to save up some more money. And I don't know, I just didn't feel right leaving in the middle of the year or anything like that. But due to the stuff that was going on with COVID and just how I was feeling about everything, the process had to speed up. <laughs> And it basically led to a point where I left officially in November, November 1st. Again, if you want to know more about what happened, I'm not going to discuss it in this video, but I think I do want to do a video talking in detail more about what happened with teaching. If that's something you want to hear, let me know in the comments. You know, I got y'all if that's what you want. So yeah, I just find it so funny how the universe will send you these signs, right? And sometimes we ignore them. 
but this is a sign that I could no longer ignore. And it even went past my own, what I thought was my own best judgment. So I left. Meanwhile, see, she on the sidelines. See, she, she on the sidelines. She was like, F that job. You're done with that job. I'm so tired of you being like, because y'all, I was stressed. When I tell you, when we got back in the classroom, I was so unhappy. I was so unhappy. And I felt bad because I'm like, this is something that I've loved for like eight years at this point. This is something that I've really grown into that I've, you know, we've developed a relationship with parents, with students. And I'm like, I'm damn good at it. I'm a great educator. So it's like, how could this be? Like, why is this happening this way? Why are we breaking up? And I'm sure people feel like that in life in general, especially if you're going through like a romantic breakup or something. It's like, what? We, we've had all this time together. But you know, sometimes those good times are for those good times and then it's a dub. Like then it has to just end. That's, that's where it ended. And I didn't say anything to anyone. Like my family knew, C knew, and a few close friends. But it was a very emotional time because it wasn't just leaving the job. It was just like literally breaking up with my career and what I envisioned for myself. But at the same time, at the same time, I had already found this new love for YouTube and for content creating and for expressing myself and for helping people in a different way that I didn't know was possible. That feeling canceled out anything else. So, now we are here. Now we're here, which is crazy. Ultimately though, when I think about why I left my job, like if, if I were to ask myself, Gladys, why did you leave your job? At the end of the day, I spent enough time doing what I need to do within that role and the time simply came to an end, whether I liked it or not signs were showing that it was time for me to move on but i didn't really um take heed to them until you know once we had to go back in the classroom and during covid also the reason why i left is because i fell in love with something new something that you know really invigorated me really inspired me made me feel useful and you know where i could see me leaving an impact on a larger scale so yeah, that's why I left. So now, what's next for this channel? For is that your hair? What is next, honey? First of all, I haven't said this out loud yet, but I have a feeling that at some point I will change my channel name. So why am I gonna change my name at some point? I guess I just feel like, is that your hair? I thought of that name because I thought it was cute and quirky to be like, oh, is that your hair? Because people <laughs> used to ask me that often, like, oh, that's your hair? Oh, you should have a YouTube channel. And I just made it a thing. Now that I've like been doing this for three years now, because my three year anniversary was January 21st, 2022, I just realized I like the idea of having some type of name represent my brand. I'm not saying it has to be my name, I feel like it might be like a pseudonym of some sort that I create to represent my brand and I have no idea what it's gonna be yet. But that's what I want. I wish I had a name like, I don't know. Not that there's anything wrong with my name. I just don't think I wanna use it to represent the brand that I'm building right now. So we'll see. Hold on, this is getting a little too bright for me. Let me turn this down. Okay. So, there's that. Okay, so as far as content is concerned, to those who've been here, y'all see me switching up the content quite a bit. I've introduced fashion to my channel, which I really enjoy, and I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it too. It really makes my day seeing y'all comments on the fashion hauls because I really like doing it. It just takes so much damn work. Golly! <laughs> I give it up to people who do fashion content full time and do all those hauls oh my god and for me i'm the type of person that like i'll just go in and buy like like 20 things and i'm just like girl chill out <laughs> oh man 
but yeah so that's great i also introduced vlogs to my channel and i have quite a bit more vlog content coming i have to do part two and part three of my mexico birthday trip i went to houston i gotta put out the vlog on that i've been to new york several times i'm gonna be in new york again this coming week so i want to put out vlogs on that i'll be in jamaica this summer and i'll vlog a little bit of that not the whole thing the thing with vlogging i just like the idea of like wanting to be present versus wanting to capture the moment it's just so conflicting for me most of the time i just want to be present i don't necessarily want to have my phone out and vlogging requires you to have something out you know recording it's cool when i travel with c because c doesn't mind like filming certain things and she's at the point now where she'll be like hey she'll just pull out the camera and start filming if she knows that it's a vlogging moment because what i realize i have to kind of define the moment and say okay go in here i'm gonna vlog this space and then after that i'm done you know establish some type of boundaries with vlogging because i don't really feel the need to showcase every little thing okay so i have that content coming up i know i've been doing a lot of ponytail videos as you can see this right here if you're new here this is not my hair y'all this is a ponytail from amazon okay uh <laughs> and i love it so much i recently got this one but i have like other ones that i've showed i have like two videos already out look i'll drop all the links in my description box so y'all can check it out if you're interested but i'm coming back with the wigs it's just i'm just not as pressed lately because i'm just really into making sure my natural hair is cared for right now and i realize that when my hair is always braided i'm just more likely to neglect my hair unfortunately that's just what it's been so i need to get better at it so i'm just trying to like build the muscle back up with taking care of my hair i feel like the muscle has been building up and i'm really grateful for that so i will definitely be back to wigs by may for sure i will start doing human hair content again it's just that some of these companies be playing and i'm not for play play <laughs> and that's that on that okay so if any of them you know want to act right plus acknowledge my new rates then We'll be working together. I also want to start a blog this year, y'all. I already have the name in mind. I'm not gonna say it yet, but I, I need to just purchase the domain and just like go from there. I've been wanting to start a blog for a minute now, like at least a year, because I like to write. And I just wanna, I wanted a place to house all of my interests in one. And I think a blog is a great place for that. Plus you own your blog. We don't own any of these social media channels for real, for real. We may own the content that we produce, but if YouTube, God forbid something happens tomorrow, I mean, that's that. Hopefully you guys are saving your videos and maybe you can put it somewhere else. I know I save all of my videos. So I just want it to be on a blog where I can own it and really grow it and evergreen content is content that can be recycled and last for a very long time like years and years and that's what i'm trying to have i'm trying to have longevity with my content so i think a blog would be a great place for me to continue that because youtube is great for evergreen content don't get me wrong but i just really need to own something and having a website that you own is a great place to start right what else is coming up so I have vlogs, fashion, wigs are coming back in May. I do still have hair content coming. Like I am doing a seven easy wig hacks part two video because part one did very well for my channel. It's been a few months, but I'm still bringing it back because I have some interesting things I want to show y'all, <laughs> especially in updates that fake scalp method. I'm about to try some next shit and I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Literally, we're just going to do it on camera together and we'll just see where the chips fall. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh i do have like different companies that i want to work with of course outside of hair the way i operate i put everything on my content calendar and i do have different brand wish lists so i have my hair wish list my travel list my travel wish list my lifestyle wish list and these are all different brands that i kind of want to manifest working with at some point 
yeah so we shall see how that goes i am really excited about it i think 2022 is going to be a very good year oh my gosh y'all i forgot to mention that i'm starting back small talk saturday so stay tuned for that and i also go live on amazon so make sure you follow my storefront so you can be notified i'm also bringing back my one-on-one -on -one services where i'm gonna do two different things wig consultations one-on-one -on -one, and then also social media consultations so if you're interested let me know in the comments it's already shaping up to be great i mean i had an awesome first quarter with my amazon affiliates y'all have been really showing out with my amazon store which is also linked down below thank you thank you thank you for showing out for me in that arena it really means a lot to me i say it in every video but i mean it so when i say when y'all you know shop for me purposely to support me it means a lot overall though i just want to impart one main message to all of you if there is something that you've been wanting to do it, it, there's no better time than the present in my opinion i once i knew what it would what a, once i knew what i wanted it was really up to me to to make it happen i knew that i wanted to leave my job how am i gonna do it i would say it took me like a good year to prepare for that transition and did i feel prepared when it was time i still felt like something was slacking but you know what i'm not gonna sit here day after day coming home from work being unhappy or crying or complaining to see when i am well within my right to change my circumstance who else am i waiting for you feel me so I just want you guys to, you know, feel inspired to do the same because I'm telling you, whatever you're dealing with right now, if it's not making you happy, you do not have to be there. You don't have to be there. I don't care what it is. Now, in the matters of people with certain health conditions, that's a little bit tough. If that's your situation, I'm praying for you. But there are still things that you can do to try to just make your life easier for the moment and that's just what i'm on right now overall what i want for my channel is i want it to be a safe haven for women or people in general just to come here and really feel inspired and connected i really want my content to encourage people to be their best selves i say it in every video now because i mean that i notice that women will hit me up expressing how they felt com felt like they were not confident in one arena and then after watching my videos they try something new and they've gained a whole new sense of confidence i'm just like really like wow really i was able to do that for you that's amazing and i want to continue like pushing that forward so yeah we'll continue to see what happens i feel like something magical is about to happen i really hope that I, when i watch this video a year from now i'm in awe of what i've accomplished by then and I want to give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers, Racked in Education, because she left this comment on my video in March of 2021, which was interesting timing because COVID had just started, right? And you know what she said? She said, there is going to come a day where your talent in the beauty arena will supersede your income as a teacher. You won't have to do both unless you want to. You will be less stressed and completely blessed. Teaching is hard enough. I support you well honey look what we have here <laughs> thank you so much girl because at that time i had just come out of my burnout mode from doing too much on youtube and not having boundaries and all this craziness and that message meant a lot to me because i was like working towards that goal and now here we are doing youtube doing my thing so yeah 2022 we really trying to make it on and popping i'm trying to be at peace with all my decisions and that's also why i came to y'all because i was like i felt like i was holding on to something from teaching that i need to let go of and i was like you know what i think i just need to speak about it and just let it all out and i'm really happy i did because y'all are the reason why like y'all are a big reason why i'm here because y'all support me y'all have poured into me and it has allowed me to flourish and now I'll be in a position where I can work for myself. <sighs> that is the greatest gift that y'all could have given to me. So thank you so much for watching this video. I feel like I don't even know. I don't even want to edit this video, but I'm probably going to have to put some clips together. But either way, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for rock with me. 
for showing me love, for liking, for commenting, for sharing, for supporting. I'll keep y'all abreast of all the updates as they come through. But yeah, drop a comment if you know any of this resonates with you, if you've been in any similar situation with a previous career that you had, a previous job. Let's talk about it. You know I love to chit chat. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one.